I pull your pant leg down, you're looking like David Henry with Capri's right now. All right, guys, Nate Simons here, marketing manager up at Renegade Cigars. Uh, we've done some past videos and, and doing some blind tastings, and we wanted to have a little bit of fun. Uh, I picked up a just kind of gas station cigar, uh, and then we have a, a more of a cigar that we pulled right from the humidor. And then we've got a couple different whiskeys up here. So we're gonna test Brandon's palate out a little bit, see if uh, that value in, in terms of that uptick in price point is worth it, and see if uh, Brandon can kind of tell the difference uh, between a uh, cheap cigar, cheap whiskey, you know, mid medium point, point versus expensive, and just kind of see what kind of value that presents. So, uh, let's start with uh, start start with cigars. So let's see what we got here. Let's see what we got. Which one are you going for first? Uh, so it looks like we got a Lancero and maybe kind of a Lonsdale. Kind of similar sizes. It's it's close, right? So one of these came out of our humidor. Yes. And one of them came from a gas station? Well, I guess Walgreens, but Walgreens. it's still like a very, very low price point cigar. What was, uh, kind of give me an idea of the price points we're working with here. About a gallon of gas. About a gallon of gas, okay. Yeah. And then the second cigar, or the first cigar, the one you pulled out of the humidor? Uh, it's, it's around a $10 price point. It's not right at $10, but it'd still be considered a, a premium cigar price point. Well, this tastes like a premium cigar. Um, it's got a beautiful wrapper on it. Looks like it's Ecuadorian Habano. Um, just looking at the, the construction of it, it, it appears to be a Cuban, uh, at least a uh, Ecuadorian Habano wrapper. It looks to be a premium cigar. Um, it's really smooth. Um, it's kind of got some caramel uh, taste to it. Um, can't really pick up exactly what it is. It tastes like it may be Nicaraguan. But it's something that you would smoke on a regular basis. Oh, this, this uh, just, you know, I'm, I'm a quarter inch in and I can tell you this is, this this cigar is, is pretty good. You'd be happy with it if you yeah. just picked it up and light it. Yeah, basically. yeah, yeah it's, it's a good cigar. Cool. Let's roll to the other one. Let's see what we got here. I know she went with a V cut for both of them. Usually you just bite the end. I, I do, but I, I went with a cut on both of them. Well, I can tell you one thing just right off the bat. Um, when I lit this cigar, I could just hear the tobaccos burning. Um, I think this is gonna be a short filler cigar. Um, short filler is the scraps of tobacco that are left over when they make a premium cigar. Um, it already gives some like real bitterness, right? Like on the, the tip of my tongue. It's a little bit off-putting. Um, it just kind of lingers, right? And not in a good way. Tastes more like a cigarette than it does a cigar. Um, I think this one's pretty easy. Um, also, I, I will say the, the wrapper on it's not terrible looking. Um, when you put them down, uh, I really wasn't 100% sure. I thought that had a little bit better looking wrapper. Yeah. But sometimes on inexpensive cigars, they spend all the money on, on a wrapper and then they just put kind of crummy tobaccos on the inside. So I didn't want to like judge it too soon, but. I don't know if you can tell, but just, just how quickly it's burning yeah. um, leads me to believe this is a short filler cigar. Um, and uh, this is certainly uh, the lesser expensive of the two. Can you pull any tasting notes out of it? Just harsh, man. Yeah. Just harsh. When people tell me that they've had a bad experience smoking cigars, um, and, and not everybody's gonna love even, even the best cigars. But when people tell me they've had a bad experience smoking cigars, people tell me about that nasty taste that leaves in their mouth, this is like what I envision. Yeah. Like this is a cigar that I feel like if I smoked one of these, I would be done for the day. Yeah. It's just really insulting on the palate. Um, where the other cigar, another thing I notice is even just kind of going back to this, this the first cigar, I mean, it's early, but there's like, uh, there's like more flavors going on. There's nuance. And sometimes with short filler cigars, like if, if, if they do a good job with a short filler cigar, 
it's very consistent all the way through. And if you like it, you like it all right. the way through. If you don't like it, you don't like it all the way through. It's because the mix is pretty evenly mixed. Yeah. Um, when, when you have a whole leaf tobacco, like I'm assuming this one is, and at that price point, I would assume that this is a, a whole leaf cigar, truly a premium cigar. You start noticing little transitions and like the way it starts is not necessarily the way it finishes. Um, and I'm not real far into the cigar, but I can already tell you that you know, there's, there's definitely more complexity. It's definitely smoother. I think it's Nicaraguan. It's got a little bit of spice, um, but still the spice is different. It's not a dirty burn. It's, it's almost like a white pepper spice, um, which is wildly different than kind of just the harsh burn of that. Um, and, and so yes, without question, this is the premium cigar. That's the cheap cigar. You are definitely 100% correct on that. And, and, and while uh, I'm sure the flavors are quite different, I, 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 will, I will have to say that the wrapper on that, I'm like you, I'm, I'm very like looking at this. From the outside looking in, the, the wrapper on that is definitely more than you'd expect for the, the $2 price point that that, that cigar was, was at, right? Sometimes on, on an expensive cigar, they actually buy binder mm -hmm. because binder is uh, substantially less expensive. And then what they do is they sort the binder and they find the most beautiful binder and they use that and make inexpensive cigars. And then um, the stuff that's not as perfect, um, they use for binder on premium cigars. Um, but you would never see that wrapper on a $10 cigar. Right, you got it's some noticeable veins, It's the color's not as even throughout the leaf. I mean, there's just a, a couple things that uh, that's not the, the, the best first impression that you would get at some, some premium price points. This is a good cigar though. Yeah. Um, I like this and uh, while it's not exactly my normal profile, um, it's good. Yeah, like it's a quality cigar. Um, and like I said, there, there's already a lot of flavors going on. It started out with some caramel. I'm getting a little bit of creaminess now. Um, and then um, I wouldn't say it's overly spicy, but there's enough spice that I at least believe that there's some Nicaraguan tobacco plus present it in the cigar. Yeah, that's a, that's a cigar that, you know, I haven't seen you really smoke ever. It's a skinny monster. So we wanted to throw a little bit of a, of a, a curveball at you because again, I don't think you, I've seen you ever smoke that cigar personally when I've seen you so go in the top of which means that it's probably primary, primarily Nicaraguan tobacco. Right. So, cool. so a little bit of complexity. It's, it's a little different than the, like the black and mild where it's like, hey, we're going for this particular flavor. So there's just yeah. a little bit more complexity. I wouldn't have there. known exactly what the cigar is, but I was, I was right in the fact that it's Nicaraguan. And uh, obviously I was right. Uh, you know, I think the Delta in price point, while it's, you know, why it's 3X or 2X um, in price point, um, there's certainly a completely different experience. Yeah. Um, and I like to find good value cigars. Um, if I'm going out on the lake or something, I don't want to smoke a $20 cigar. I would smoke this cigar out on the lake. I'd probably also smoke it in the lounge. Um, but that cigar, I don't, I don't think I would even enjoy on the lake. It's just, it's too harsh. So you'd probably pass that and just, uh, I would, I would pass on that. Yeah. Let's have a little bit more fun here. We're, we're going to switch to a little bit of the whiskey setup here. So we've got kind of a, a few different price points, everything from Southern comfort, which I think is like $20 a bottle all the way up to, uh, the, the Glen Marangi Signet, which is uh, significantly more expensive. Uh, so we'll, 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 we'll give you a little sample here. So if, if you don't mind, Brandon, we'll start you with, with something random here. So go ahead and look away so you can't see uh, what I'm reaching for. Let's uh, start with this one right here. Let's see what you think. Glad you brought out the uh, glass the glassware for this. <sighs> hey, you know what? We, uh, nothing but the best tasting notes. Okay. Now, what am I comparing this like vertically or am I comparing it next to something else? Uh, it, let's start off with first impressions. Like if someone handed that to you, would you finish the drink or, or would it be something where you'd, you'd, you'd try a little bit, but probably wouldn't reach for it again? I would, I would drink that. That's a decent price. Is it, it's not really necessarily in your sweet spot though. No, it, uh, it's, it's very good. Okay. Um, but it's not, uh, not what I would normally drink. Yeah. Um, that tastes me more like a bourbon or a traditional whiskey. Okay. Um, I'm more of a scotch guy, um, but that is something that at the end of the day at the lounge, if you poured that, I could I could probably drink it with you. Are you getting some complexity from the, the taste or is it kind of like just a, 
more uh, one level nuance. No, no, there's some complexity to it. Okay. There, there's a little bit going on there. Right, so if you're by, if, how much would you think you'd pay for that at a port or bar? Ooh, I don't know. Um, Ten, twelve dollars. Okay. Okay. All right. We'll find something else here. The face says a lot. Takes me back to high school. <laughs> um, sorry, Ma. Um, <laughs> Took your breath away. It did. <laughs> um, wow. Uh, so definitely a little, at least at least more like alcohol taste. Okay. It has a real cinnamon like finish, and like a little cinnamon finish is one thing. Mm -hmm. But that is, uh, it almost has like a, what is that? Uh, the really strong shit we used to drink back in the Everclear with like a, like a like you you melted a uh, peppermint inside of uh, Everclear. Um, I don't know what that cost, um, but I don't think I would probably drink that at any cost. Okay. So no, no complexity there, just... just I mean, uh, if, if, if there's layers of cinnamon, there might be layers of cinnamon, but it's, it's cinnamon and nothing else. It'll get you where you need to go, but it's not going to be a fun journey. Yeah, so I think in the first two, without question, um, the first one certainly you know, would be more like the cigar I'm smoking now. Yeah. Um, where it had a nose that, that took me one place. Um, I actually thought that there was gonna be a lot of caramel on it. Um, and there was a lot of caramel on the nose. Um, but as I started uh, to, to taste it, um, I got some creaminess, I got a little bit of earthiness, and then I got kind of a uh, woody taste. Uh, I don't know, maybe, maybe like an American oak taste or something like that that was yeah. a little bit unique. So there were certainly layers of complexity in the first one. Yeah. Um, if you know, if I had, a, I'd probably pick out more if I had a little bit more. But uh, but certainly. Where too. Yeah, but there was certainly something to it, right? Yeah. Um, you know, 10, 12, 15 bucks. I don't know, but certainly not two or three dollars. Yeah. Um, uh, if I was on Sixth Street and and just trying to get the cheapest whiskey available, that's kind of what I would expect out of the second one. Okay. Maybe maybe a good mixer, but not drink it by itself. All right, avert your eyes, we'll, go, we'll, we'll take the next journey here. All right, let's see what you think about that one. It's got some honey on the nose. These next two are gonna be interesting because I know you drink both of these on a regular basis, but. So we've moved into scotch. We have. So the first two, didn't really taste like bourbon, but they had more of that kind of bourbon taste where I get more of a gritty sugar okay. finish. Yeah. This has a really long finish. Um, I'm, I'm still picking up flavors now. Um, but a good long, it's not like something like the, like the second or- It's not a gritty, like sometimes after I drink bourbon, I get a taste, um, like the, the front of bourbon to me, is excellent. It's got a lot of complexity. The nose on bourbon, good bourbons, right? Yeah. Um, is really good. The only beef I've ever had with bourbons, I know you're a bourbon guy, I'm a scotch guy. The only beef I've ever had is that gritty aftertaste mm -hmm. where it's like, you know, people call it a long finish and I'm like, I feel like I need to go brush my teeth. You ever eat sugar or cake or something and afterwards you just feel like your, your, your mouth is just kind of coated with sugar? It's like you're just chewing on sugar, sugar cubes. I, I get that more with, uh, with bourbons. Give you a better example. What it reminds me of is, you ever been to a restaurant? You're not from the South, you're from Detroit, so you probably never had sweet tea. But every now and then when you travel, and in Texas you're gonna get sweet tea, but uh, when you travel and you ask for sweet tea and they say we have tea and sugar packs, and you try to mix the sugar pack in with cold tea. It's that last drink. It doesn't mix, and so you take that last drink yeah. and you're like, whoa, that was the sweet tea I was looking for, perfect. And then you're like, oh, that gritty aftertaste, right? Yeah. That's kind of what I get with bourbons. This doesn't have this. This is this is like I don't know what price point it is, but I would I would buy this. This is the interesting thing when you talk about like taste. It's very subjective, right? Like because you talk about bourbons having that 
aftertaste that you don't like is initial up front. Like scotches for me have some complexity, but are overwhelmed with butterscotch. I get that note more than anything. There's a little scotch. butterscotch to that. And if you don't like butterscotch, you probably wouldn't like it. Right. Um, but, you know, I got a little peppery taste mm -hmm. um, it, that actually paired well with the cigar. Mm -hmm. This cigar is not overly spicy, but it's got a little bit of white pepper. Yeah. I get that with that, um, that whiskey. Um, I get the butterscotch you're talking about, I get a caramely taste, um, I get some sweetness, um, but uh, there's just a lot going on in that. Like that to me is, is that, that's, that's special. Yeah. All right. Last one. I should have nosed that. Yeah, I mean, you just went right in. So that is also scotch. That is also very good. Mm -hmm. I would also buy that. Okay. Um, and I've also had that before. Um, now that I've had both um, of the last two and I identified them both as scotch, mm -hmm. I'm going to say that the, the third one that I tried was Signet. And this is the original Glenmorangie. Uh, that being said, I would drink both of them. Uh, as you know, I'm a big fan of Glenmorangie. Yes. Um, both of them have a lot of flavor. Both of them are very nice on the palate. Uh, the delta between the two is the finish. The finish on the third one was significantly longer than the finish on the fourth one. So let's start from the beginning here. The first one I would drink with you mm -hmm. if you were pouring it out of your bottle. Okay. Okay. I could enjoy it, um, wouldn't probably be a bottle that after we drink it I'd go buy, but I would drink it with you and I could enjoy it. Yeah. The second one, um, you'd probably get pissed off if I poured it for you. I, I would just tell you thank you, but I'm, I'm probably not going to drink a, a second. <laughs> um, the third one, um, really fantastic. Um, the fourth one, very good. Yeah, I wouldn't say fantastic, but I would say very good. So, so this is where it gets subjective, right? So if you're going to debate between the first one and the fourth one, what's the difference in, in nuances or, or value proposition for you? So I would say the first one and the fourth one, as far as quality, I would say are pretty on par. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think both of those are, are good. You can tell that they've got some age on them. You can tell that somebody put, put some work into creating those experiences. Yeah. Um, I would take the fourth one, but if you said, you know, I like the first one better, or anybody said that, I get it. Yeah. They're both quality experiences. Mm -hmm. They're both good spirits. Um, if you ask me the first one or the fourth one, or excuse me, the first one or the third one, I would tell you all day long that I'd take the third one. But really, I could drink one, three, or four. Two, I'm gonna pass on. Yeah, totally understand that. And again, this is when we get into taste being subjective, and there's some things that are, are pretty consistent, both in cigars and in liquor, right? You can see the big delta between the very entry level and the uh, higher end stuff, because there's the more complexity. Tell me how I did, bro. You did pretty good. I Actually, you were four for four. Uh, you were... Uh... So if I'm gonna guess, mm -hmm. I'm gonna guess the first one was the Sagamore. Yep. Okay. Um, the one that I couldn't stand was the Southern Comfort, right? Yep. That was cinnamon snaps almost. That's a drain pour, yeah. Yeah. Almost. And then uh, the third one was the Glenmorangie S Signet. Yep. And the fourth one which by the way is a bottle that I keep at home. So this was like right. kind of a, like a cheat setup. Yeah. Because this is a bottle that when I have friends come over, I share with my friends, yeah. but I still enjoy. Yeah, I've drank with that with you a couple times now. Now, if I have a friend that I know really likes scotch, I'll break out my Signet, right? The Signet to me, you know, sub three, $400 bottle is about as good as you're gonna get. Yeah. Um, but let's take it like a different level, right? And if I was sitting on suitcases of cash, I would just buy this one. Right. Okay. But the difference between this $230 bottle, and this is a large format, but assuming it's a 750, 
This is about a $45 bottle, right? Yes. Um, the delta between the two is minimal. So on a, there's like a, a certain day, a certain occasion where I would think that this value proposition like works for me. But generally speaking, I think this is a fine purchase, yeah. right? Day in and day out, if I'm just sitting at the lounge and I'm moving around, I'm you know, having a drink with somebody and I set it down, I come back, I'm not like really sitting there like getting personal with my drink. Yes. I don't see a value proposition, the Delta being a value proposition. Yeah. Now, on my birthday, sitting with my three best friends at a bar in Vegas, I'm buying this one. Oh yeah. But um, it's that last 10%, right? Like that, it's that last little finishing touch, that, that extra step that, that just yeah. takes there. But the price difference, I don't know. What does Southern Comfort cost? $20? If that, yeah. And what does this bottle cost? 50, around, 60? Yeah, it's around 50, 60 bucks. I think $30 well spent. Yeah. I mean, if you have one or two ounce pours every single night, you're gonna get 20 pours out of that drink. It's gonna last you. Right. You know, it's gonna last you, uh, if you drink every day, it's gonna last you over a week. Uh, that $30 value proposition, uh, I would definitely spend the extra money. Um, on this one, I don't know that I would spend the extra money unless it was a special occasion. Um, as far as the cigars are concerned, um, I think the, the, the difference is there. But I think it's true in cigars too. I think if you gave me a $10 cigar and you gave me a $40 cigar, I think on a special occasion, I might take that $40 cigar. But there are a lot of $10 cigars that are excellent. I think this is the $10 cigar. Yeah. I, somebody told me, I'm not a wine guy, I know you like wine, mm -hmm. but somebody told me a long time ago, a, a, a real wine guy told me, Brandon, like, don't get caught up in $100 bottles, just quit spending $7, $10 on a bottle. Yes. Once you go $13, $14, $15, $15, you're really drinking good wine, yes. right? Now, once your palate develops and, and your appreciation for the winemaker and their process, you know, once that grows, then maybe splurge on a bottle. But really what, what he told me was most people, you know, they drink $8 bottles and then a $180 bottle. And he's like, the, the, the Delta's not there. Go 16, 18, $24 retail. I'm not talking about restaurant prices, but I'm talking about retail. And he told me that the, the value proposition is there. But once you get a 16, 18, $20 a bottle, you're drinking pretty good wine. Now, there is a time and a place for more expensive wine, of course, but that's not every day. Right. And I, I think the same is true with cigars. While I love selling a hundred dollar Davidoff Royal, right? And I love smoking a hundred dollar Davidoff Royal. I'm not smoking hundred dollar Davidoff Royals, you know, on a Tuesday while I'm like, you know, doing my cigar taxes. Yeah. Like it just doesn't make sense. Yes. But if you can take your budget from four dollars, five dollars to ten dollars, you know, you're ten xing. Your, it's, it's a completely different experience. Right? I mean, we talk about cigars being an affordable luxury. There's, again, you talk about bottles of wine. You can spend $1,000 on a bottle of wine. You can spend $150 bottles of wine. But the value proposition of going from a 2 or $3 cigar to a $10 cigar is $7, right? That's, that's a, a, a meal you're, at McDonald's. You're 20 xing Right. It, it, it's just there. It, 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 you're, you're, and it's an hour of your time, you know? So, I mean... If you're a 14 an hour guy or $35 an hour guy, I mean, at most, it's, it's an hour difference and you should take the time to, to really enjoy that hour versus just toughing something through. I don't think anybody should smoke $4 cigars, period. Yeah. Um, but one thing I do like about cigars, to your point, is this. Um, I don't care whether you make $12 an hour, or you make, you know. Buku bucks. Yeah, you're, you're an attorney and you bill at $500 an hour, right? Right. Um, you can reward yourself once a week with a $10 cigar and have a really good experience, right? right? You don't walk in Louis Vuitton, you don't walk in the Lamborghini or Aston Martin dealership and reward yourself at, at that level, no. right? Um, if you're making 10, $12 an hour. But you can reward yourself with a really good cigar. Yeah. Um, for ten bucks, right? Yeah. You can get a really good cigar. And if you're an attorney, you probably should smoke ten dollars cigars. There's a lot of really good stuff out there at ten bucks. Um, but on a special occasion, maybe you buy something crazy. Yeah. But really, 
you know, nobody should smoke $5 cigars. You smoke $5 cigars, you should smoke less cigars and buy, you know, buy half as many cigars and smoke $10 cigars. And I don't mean $9 or $8 is not good, but four or $5, this right here should be thrown in the trash, right? This should be enjoyed. And by the way, I, you know, there are people that have better palates than me. There are people that have more experience with cigars than I do, but I smoke a lot of cigars. I've had a lot of exposure to cigars. I enjoy this and I don't think there's any reason at you know, two o'clock on Tuesday while you're working and doing your expense report, why you should spend more money than this. There's not many things that are handcrafted that have touched like probably four to 10 people's hands in the amount of time that That's they go in effort. That's new, brother. Yeah. 200 sets of hands touch See. a cigar before it's made, and there's before nothing, it ever hits a retail shelf. And there's nothing that you can get for $10, $12 that'll, that'll come close to that, right? No, I, I love when people like, you know, they sell bags and uh, you know, a, a backpack is $39 for a decent backpack and they sell a handmade backpack for $7.99, yeah. right? And they're like, yeah, I would like a handmade backpack. But the delta between the two, like it's, it's, it, it's two different people that buy that. Right. But when you talk about a $5 cigar versus a $10 cigar, generally speaking, the same person can enjoy that um, and, and can afford that. And I think you, by all means, you should spend the extra few bucks. I don't think that everybody should buy Signet. I think that should be a special occasion thing, unless you just have the money to drink Signet all the time. I think this is a fantastic bottle. Yeah. I also don't think anybody should be punished by drinking that. That's a good option. I think that kind of wraps up what we're doing today, man. Yeah, awesome. <laughs> well guys, I hope you enjoyed this and uh, I look forward to the next video like this.